Hi guys, it's Josh Lloyd here for your NBA DraftKings first look for Friday. There's 11 games on, but we're going to be talking about 10 of them because the first game, the Pacers and the Jazz, is a weird early game, so it's not included in the main slate. So we're going to talk about the other 10 games here. Let's crack in. But before I do, hit the bell. Notifications, you've got to get them. You've got to get these notifications. Give it a thumbs up as well, one of those big fellas. And uh, drop a comment down below. All right, let's go. First game, uh, yeah, this one's going to be rough. The Thunder and the Pistons. This this whole day is just weird shit going on. Teams are resting everybody. The Pistons are going to be without Jeremy Grant, Wayne Ellington, Dennis Smith, Corey Joseph, everyone pretty much. The Thunder, no Pokyshevsky, no Shea, although Lou Dort will be returning to action. Um, and yeah, there's just going to be weird stuff going on. But that means that Isaiah Stewart at 4,400, is possibly the best play of the day. Yes, Jelly Okafor is there, and yes, Dwayne Casey's an idiot. So there could be some frustration there. But look, we had a 42-point game last time he started, Isaiah Stewart. 26 coming off the bench. Really like this one here for him. And then, do we do it? Do we rely upon Killian Hayes? It feels pretty gross, but no Dennis Smith, who was starting. Then Smith went out, and Corey Joseph replaced him. Does Dwayne Casey go with Saban Lee? Hayes is by far the best point guard on this team, by far. Um, 22 last game, a 34-pointer there. 3,500, give me 20 points and you've already won. Give me 30 and you're smashing. I love both of those guys here. I also think with Wayne Ellington out, we've got to look at Josh Jackson. There's just so many blokes out on this Pistons team. So Josh Jackson, noted power forward uh, on DraftKings, apparently, as a starting shooting guard. He is worth a look at 5,300. The depressed penis, Sadiq Bay is at 4,800. We've got to like that one as well. For Bay. he's going to get ample opportunity. And and if we want to take a flyer, is Sigurd Dumbaya? Or Frank Jackson, both minimum salary players who are going to see their roles increased. 3,100 for Saban Lee. There is so much weird upside value on this team. Even MC Hamadou Diallo. Although I wouldn't be too excited about him, especially at 4,200 when I can get Suku or Frank or Saban in there at basically minimum salary. Last time Lou Dort played, he dropped 66 DraftKings points. Now you would be a fool to expect Dort to do that again. But there is an opportunity for him to put up 30. And at 5,300, I don't mind it. It's just that he's dwarfed by value from these Pistons guys. I think Moses Brown at 6,100. He dropped 41 last game, maybe, especially in this matchup. It could work out. Baisley at 5,600 has had two good games and one absolute stinker. Yeah, look, we look at his last game. We had, well, if we go to the log there, 32, 8, 35. So all over the place, really. But you get 30 from Baisley, and it's all right. I, I wouldn't be hope. I wouldn't be super into it. Um, not into Svi Mahaluk, not into Tony Bradley or Julie Okafor or Isaiah Roby either. But that is a game where there's some weird shit probably going to go down. Absolutely. You almost guarantee you'll get some weird shit in that one. The next one we look at is the Pelicans and the Wizards. And in this one, instead of players being out, we've got players returning. Lonzo Ball has been upgraded to probable. That's going to impact the value of Najee Marshall, of James Johnson. It's going to turn Eric Bledsoe from being a zero maybe into a minus player. That's how bad he's going to be. But it is going to have an impact. While the Wizards, who knows what sort of nonsense they're going to pull at center, but Dan Gafford's always the guy we want to look at. And let's start by looking at Dan Gafford, who is you know, easily their best center, getting the most minutes, but it's still not 20 a game. But look at this, 26, 22, 22, 22, 19 points. And you're at under 3,500. Absolutely, I'll use him every day of the week. Russ Westbrook's at 11,000. I'm into that. Big into Russ Westbrook. Lonzo's at 75. I'd probably be cautious about using him. Same with Beal at 8,900. Well, Zion's up to 10,000. I think that's too high. Well, it's too high to extract value out of it. Let's put it that way. And Ingram at 85. I'd almost have the same feeling. Although Ingram has been playing well for averaging 49 over the last three. It might be on the high side. Eric Bledsoe, forget about that. Rui Hachimura. God, no, no, not even a chance in hell. James Johnson and Najee Marshall, I think both those guys who have been performing well with Lonzo back, it does impact them. The Pelicans are one and a half point favorites here. We've got a really big total, 242. So that's at least appealing on that uh, in that respect. The next game we take a look at, the LA Clippers taking on the Philadelphia 76ers. Paul George is back, but both Tobias Harris and Kawhi Leonard are listed as questionable. Marcus Morris also returns to action, while Dwight Howard is questionable for the Sixers. Ben Simmons is down at 7,800 on DraftKings. There's a reason. He's been bad. But last game, I thought we started to see some improvements from Simmons. 43 DraftKings points would tell us, yes, he did start to improve. Against the Clippers is probably not the right spot to use him, but against any team is the right spot to use Joel Embiid. He's at 10,500, and even if he plays 30 minutes, I feel like he's going to get 50 points. He's averaging uh, 55 over his last three. Paulie George at 9,100. I would smash if Kawhi is out. If Kawhi is in, I'm a little bit more lukewarm. And the same goes for Marcus Morris at 5,600. Marcus Morris at 56 looks great with no Kawhi and a little less great if Kawhi plays. 
No Serge Ibaka, so if it's a Zubat, he's averaging 35 a game. The worry, the worry you have with Zubats is fouls going up against Embiid. So that would probably scare me off a little bit there. While if Toby Harris is out, we're looking at Furky from Turkey. Furkan Korkmaz, you can't miss shots apparently. And last time Harris was out, he put up a really big one. 42 points there, but has gone 30 and 22 in the last two off the bench. He can easily get you 30 points, easily get you 25 points. And at 3,800, who's saying no to that? Nobody, absolutely nobody. But So keep an eye on Toby Harris' status. The next game is another one where there is, um, well, how you say, shenanigans afoot. The Orlando Magic and the Toronto Raptors. Mo Bamba is questionable for the Magic. Fred Van Vliet is back for Toronto. Fred Van Vliet is back. That's cool. But Gary Trent is out. Kyle Lowry is out. Pascal Siakam is out. And the Jedi OG Ananobi is out. So who's starting? Flynn and Van Vliet, probably. Oh, DeAndre Bembry is also out. Rocket Rodney Hood starting, probably. Um, the Boucher and Birch combination in the front court, probably. Yuta Watanabe going to get minutes. He's at minimum salary at Yuta. Uh, last game. With, with fewer players out, he dropped 21 points in 20 minutes. In. I'm in. Ken Birch at 3,800. In. Fred Gillespie. Amazingly, in on a bloke called Freddie Gillespie. Who, where is he on my list? There he is. 3,100. In on Freddie Gillespie. Malachi Flynn at 6,200. It is high for Flynny. Um, but I don't hate it. We know he's getting ample opportunities. I like it. Van Vliet, 7,900. The only thing I worry about is they keep his minutes down, but otherwise, he's going to take every shot in the world. So he's a GPP option for us there. And then Michael Carter-Williams is out for the Magic. So does that mean that Steve Clifford does the right thing and start Cole Anthony? He should. So this is a big opportunity for Cole. Well, Gaz Harris. Now, Gary put up some good numbers last game. It's about, It would have been the Battle of the Gazes, but Gary Trent's out. Gary Harris at 3,600. He dropped in a casual 29 last game in 30 minutes. Big opportunity for him again here. And the only reason I'm interested in him is that salary. Uh, Wendell Carter's at 62, and if Mo Bumba is out, that is absolutely smashable. He will uh, he will not be phased, I don't think, by the Boucher-Birch matchup on the other end, and he should be able to put up close to 40. In fact, against his former team, the Chicago Bulls, he had 47 points in that one. But this is a game that is shaping up as a shit show, and normally um, Steve Clifford will be starting someone like the Sharp Dwayne Bacon, but I think I think we've finally broken the habit. I think we're I think we're done with Dwayne Bacon uh, opportunities, which is awesome. Um, next game we look at is the Charlotte Hornets and the Brooklyn Nets. Of course, LaMarcus Aldridge has retired abruptly due to that heart problem. We hope that he is okay with his health, but he will not be playing. So who is the starter? Is it DeAndre Jordan? Is it Nick Claxton? Do they do stupid shit and start Blake Griffin? That's a big question. The Hornets will be without Devontae Graham and PJ Washington Jr. So some opportunities opening up there as well. Let's start with Claxo. He's at 3,600. I don't know whether he starts. I don't know if I actually care whether he starts or not. It's all about whether he gets more minutes than DeAndre Jordan, which before the arrival of LaMarcus Aldridge, he was. Now, recently that production has fallen off, but I don't mind him as an upside, an ups I was going to call him an upside down player. I don't know what the hell an upside down player is, as an upside player. Jalen McDaniels in 5,200. Love this opportunity for Jalen. Uh, Miles Bridges at 64. Absolutely massively in on Miles Bridges. While Caleb Martin started the last time that we had a guard out. Now, do they put Terry Rozier at point guard? They almost have to. There's no other point guards on this team. Caleb Martin at 3,600, in. Now, we've got him and you've got his brother. He is the offensive player. Cody is the defensive player. Cody's at 32, which is all right, but I'd much rather take Caleb there. Kyrie's at 9,900. We are going to have Kevin Durant returning, so Kyrie at 9,900 probably isn't as appealing as we would hope, but I do like the 8,100 for Terry Rozier. Again, he is going to have to take an absolute shit ton of shots. Durant's up to 9,400. I think they'll be pretty casual with his minutes. I'm not super into that. Well, 48 for the Shark, Bruce Brown. It could work, but with Durant and Irving there, I'm not I'm not totally in on it. We could look to DeAndre Jordan as well, who's at 4,200. And if he plays and starts and gets 20 plus minutes, he'll beat that number. We saw that the last two games, 40 and 26. Absolutely, he is a play. Like That is not an expensive price. The Nets, though, are 13 and a half point favorites. Now, Jordan's not going to be at risk of being rested in a blowout, most likely. It's more that he's shit house. So Claxton might get those minutes. The next game we take a look at the Denver Nuggets up against the Houston Rockets. The Nuggets are eight and a half point favorites despite the injury to uh, Jamal Murray. The total's 224. Um, 
Lots of interesting stuff happening here. Big Chungus, Nicole Jokic at 10,900. The worry you have is the blowout, but I still think that Jokic can put up those numbers. Monty Morris at 3,700. Another start coming, hopefully in another easing of minutes restrictions. I like that. Well, John Wall at 8,200. He's going to do everything in his power take, to take every shot in the world, so that works for me. PJ Dozier, I think, can be all right at 3,500. He takes on a, an increased role. While Maga Porter Jr. is at 7,400. I do think that this is a good matchup for Porter. Chrissy Wood, the crucifix, 8,300. He looks to be back in form. So let's go with him as well as a pretty solid option. Aaron Gordon, he did have 32 last game, which at 5,700 works. No reason for him not to be an option for us here. And same as cousin Kev, Kevin Porter. But at 6,800 against the Nuggets team with John Wall playing, I'm probably less interested in Port in Porter in this one. Uh, well, Olenek at 65. Man, this guy is just putting up huge numbers. Kelly Olenek last game dropped 50. He's averaging 39 over the last five. And at 6,500, there is no reason to at least not consider him apart from the fact that his name is Kelly Olenek. But if you cast that bias aside... Maybe he can be of use. Um, next one, Memphis taking on the Chicago Bulls. Well, the Bulls will do everything in their power to do something stupid in this one. Unfortunately, they do not have Zach Levine, so that amplifies the opportunities for stupidity from Billy Donovan. The last time Levine missed a game, we had Lowry Markinen start with Thad Young at the three and Patrick Williams at the four. Now, when you've got an opportunity to start three power forwards in a lineup and a center, I reckon you've got to do it. And that was what, obviously what Billy Donovan's mindset was. Now, they could go with Kobe White at the two. Literally, he is a shooting guard, not a point guard, so maybe they could start him there. They could start Garrett Temple and just go with no offense at all. They could also start Troy Brown and go with another shit-out shooting player in there. They could start the hammer Denzel Valentine, who is at least a good shooter. There are four to five different options of what Chicago can do in that lineup with Levine out, and that's going to make it pretty complex. No DeAnthony Melton or no Justice Winslow for the old uh, Grizzlies. But when we look at value, Markin at 3,900, even if he doesn't start, his shot creation and ability to shoot and score is really the only thing he has going for him. And with Levine out, they need someone to do that. So I do think he works. And if they're going to push those players down to the three like Thadmore, that opens up more value for Daniel Tice, who's been playing a lot next to Nikola Vucevic, and he's at 3,700. Tice is already averaging 29 over the last three. And I wouldn't say this situation makes things worse for him. Valanciunas at 7,900. Real ass-ripping potential here from Valanciunas. Looking for him to drop some big ones here. 50-point average over the last three. Well, Nikola Vucevic at 97. I like it. I do prefer Valanciunas with the uh, the 79, though, over Vuce at that price. Morant's at 71. Good opportunity. Whenever you're out of form, good opportunity to play the Bulls to put up some good numbers, and I like that salary for him. Uh, Troy Brown's at 3,000. Again, he could start. Minimum salary, Troy Brown, if he starts, I think he's in play for us. While well, Grayson Allen at 44, he probably drops 40 on the Bulls, let's be fair. At 4,400, that makes quite a bit of sense to get him into the... Um, Get him into your rotation. Dylan Brooks is always just an upside sort of guy. And uh, Kobe White, I think we've got to have the same reservations about as we do with Dylan Brooks. Next game, Miami taking on the Minnesota Timberwolves. Goran Dragic should return here for Miami after resting in the last game. But of course, there will be no Victor Oladipo because he's out for God knows how long with whatever injury he's dealing with. Carl Anthony Towns is going to return for the Timberwolves. So that's going to limit our exposure to Jared Vanderbilt, Ed Davis, and Naz Reed, if anyone cared there. While Andre Iguodala is questionable and Jalen Noel is questionable, although I believe Noel is questionable. Sorry, he's more closer to doubtful than questionable. Goose, Anthony Edwards, 7,500. The volume is there every night for Goose and that's giving him 36, 37 a night. And if the shots ever go in, then he'll beat that number. So I like it. I like Kendrick Nunn at 4,600 as well with no Oladipo. Uh, D'Angelo Russell's at 65, probably a little bit too high, but 10-7 for Townsie. Now, I do like what Townsie's doing, obviously. He's averaging 60 in his last five. The Bam at a buyer matchup is a little bit worrisome for me, but I don't think it's one that's totally disqualifying. I think we can look at Towns okay there. Trevor Ariza at 3,800. It's not particularly sexy, so therefore let's not use it. While Tyler Hero's at 53, that's also not particularly sexy. Not interested in uh, Butler, really, or um, Jaden McDaniels either. Let's go on to the next one. It is Portland. It is San Antonio. The Blazers here are one and a half point favorites in this matchup on the road against the Spurs. Um, Yusuf Nurkic, I love what he's doing at the moment. Let's hope they say he's got a 30-minute limit because he will smash 5,500. He's already putting up numbers that are way better than that, averaging 30 points over his last three in limited minutes. If they say he's up to 30, let's go. Like, let's fire it all the way up. Paddy Mills against his former team. 
Yes, Paddy Mills did play for someone that wasn't San Antonio. 3,500 for Patrick. I think that's some good upside options there. Well, DeJounte Murray's come down to 7,000, and that puts him back in play to me at that $7,000 price point. Lillard's at 9,500. He did have 51 last game, but I'm not fully feeling Lillard, especially against DeJounte Murray. Well, Derek White at 62 is probably on the high side, and Storm and Norman Powell at 58 also isn't inspiring the largest amount of confidence in me. Uh, we had a big game from Carmelo Anthony last time, 32 points. At 3,900, he's at least in GPP discussions, but I, I do not trust it for a single second. And the last game of the day, the Dallas Mavericks taking on the uh, New York Knickerbockers in Dallas. The Mavericks are five-point favorites, and the total is a measly 210.5. Jalen the Burner Brunson, 4,700. It's always hard to trust a guy coming off the bench to get those 30 minutes, but Brunson's been doing it pretty regularly and putting up good numbers. I'm going to watch the status of Nerlens Noel. He is questionable. And then if he is out, we fire Taj Gibson all the way to the moon. Big numbers, hopefully, from Gibson if that situation arises where Noel doesn't play. Gibson's at 38, and he dropped 28 in the last game. Porzingis, against his former team, I think he can lock in 40 points, maybe 50. He's been pretty good in the second half of the season, while the double royal Julius Randle, you can almost pencil him in for 50 every night. So I do think that's a good opportunity there. Rowan Barrett, Derek Rose, Alec Burks... Josh Richardson, Alfred Payton, Reggie Bullock, just a whole bunch, Tim Hardaway of shooting guard slash point guards that I have zero trust in whatsoever. And I'll probably be avoiding them in a lot of scenarios or nearly every scenario. If we look right across the slate, I'm loving Watanabe, Isaiah Stewart, Ken Birch, Claxton, Markinen, Killian Hayes, Josh Jackson, Sadiq Bay, Daniel Tice, Jalen McDaniels, Fred Gillespie, uh, Yusuf Nurkic, Jonas Valanciunas, Patrick Williams, maybe, Dan Gafford, Malachi Flynn, Monty Morris, Chris Boucher, Nikola Jokic, DeJounte Murray, Johnny Wall, Nikola Vucevic, and Russell Westbrook, probably some of my best plays of the day. Don't forget, guys, hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Give it a thumbs up. Follow my channel as well in the description at Josh Lloyd Fantasy Basketball and linked in the title. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. See ya.